Good morning, everyone. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Woo! In fact, got my little green man. I'm going to have a little fun. Got my little bling, bling, bling. My lucky little hat. And today we are celebrating St. Patrick's Day edition of What's Sold on eBay. Well, if you like my videos, you know what to do. Hit that little subscribe button. Hit the thumbs up. Throw me a comment. Hit the little bell. Ding. This way you get informed as I produce more and more videos. So, everybody, it is March 17th. It is St. Patrick's Day 2020. I think this is going to be a memorable year, considering I bet for everyone else, they have canceled all the St. Patrick's Day parades. That's no fun. Why are they canceling everything? And I look outside. It is gray. It is dreary. It is raining. So, you know, something on the parade probably would have been canceled anyway. But let's talk about what's sold on eBay because I'm a little excited. Sales are slowly starting to pick up. Keeping my fingers crossed because let's get the momentum going. So the first thing is I think people are at home they love the fact that they could sit home with a good book and read. I sold, dun dun dun, King Tut. This is actually a book of postcards. They're beautiful postcards inspired by King Tut, the Egyptian mummy. Um, it's all about the golden age of pharaohs, a book of postcards. Contains 30 oversized postcards. So I guess um, you can either use it as a collector's item or... Being that everybody's locked in, start writing uh, little postcards to your loved ones. This particular item sold for $7. So not too bad. It was a freebie book anyway. Sold it for $7. It's a sale. The next book I sold. And well, let's just say I took the best deal. Do I dare say that? Yes, I'm taking all deals that are, all offers that are being sent. If it is a reasonable offer, yes, I'm accepting it. I guess that's a secret. I shouldn't probably be saying that. But this one, it is, can you see that? No, you can't even see it. I'm going to show it to you. It is the favorite works of Mark Twain. Now, this particular copy happens to be an old one. It's the deluxe edition from 1939. So it's a 1939 collection of Mark Twain books. Had it up for quite some time. Finally got an offer for $5. Guess what? I took the $5 offer. Um, the way I look at it is I now reduced my real estate by this book, which is actually equivalent to like three of the smaller books. It got rid of an old book that I've been holding for a while. Made me just a little bit of money and it got it off the shelf so I could clear the shelf for other things. So yeah, I took the $5 deal, but a little disappointed because we kept negotiating back and forth and I'm like dude come on but we're not gonna go there so that sold as well the next item I sold kind of interesting this happened to be an item that was tossed in one of those ten dollar um carts from uh dirt cheap uh I'll, I'm not too sure if it was just the ten dollar one or the three thirty dollar one it doesn't matter it was thrown in a dirt cheap part it is a shower curtain and it happens to be a pineapple style shower curtain with little black pineapples and um black and white pineapples so this believe it or not and i'm gonna be a little worried i'm i'm gonna put this in a priority flat envelope because at least i know that's a fixed rate price but this baby is going to hawaii you would think in Hawaii they have so many pineapples to begin with, but I guess it makes perfect sense. It's a it's a pineapple shower curtain going to Hawaii. So this little baby sold for $12. I will put it in the flat rate um, priority envelope, and that should be a couple of dollar profit. Not too bad. I mean, like I said, in a sense, between that $10 card, it's as, almost a, as if I got it for free. Because when you start taking everything out, each item is pennies. Now, the next item, uh, interesting story behind this item. It's actually a consignment item, um, which I hope the person is not upset about it. But I've been holding on to it for a while. Yes, I do consignment. 
I have pretty interesting rules when it comes to consignment, which I do explain to the people. Generally speaking, I take a 20% cut, which I know is very low, but I also add an additional 10%, which is strictly for eBay fees. They understand that. So pretty much it's a 30% cut. 20% is coming to me, 10% is going to eBay, and the rest, 70%, is money in their hand. That's how it works. So this particular thing, I could have done it piece by piece by piece. Instead, I decided to do it as a total lot. And um, I put it up for $100. It kept going down, 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 down. Finally sold it for $50. So basically what's going to happen is, uh, what is that? I'm getting $15 out of the deal. They're getting um, $45 out of the deal. No, what am I saying? Not $45, $35. They're getting $35 out of the deal. And it's, it's a good deal. So what this was was a Leanne Rhymes collection. And I just want to show and highlight a couple of pieces because some of this was really cute and some of it I probably could have gotten more. But it's been sitting on eBay for quite some time. I even posted this lot up on the Leanne Rhymes International Facebook group, which so many people asked me questions about, but nobody was actually ding, 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 ringing in the money. Finally, I got a bit. So it starts off with this cute little completely sealed um, bear. Now, I was looking at the comps. Comps for this was about $20, $30 to begin with, but they're not really selling. I mean, it's a very, very slow sale. So probably if I separated this guy alone, I probably could have made the money. But like I said, I, this was $50 for the entire deal. Then there happened to be a Leanne Rhymes concert um, t-shirt. And this was when she was really young. Um, price tag is still on it from JCPenney's, originally $18. It is a uh, cronies t-shirt, size large. So that's going to go to them. Um, then there's a whole bunch of magazines. So there's like the TV guide. There's the book that she wrote. Um, turns out she writes books. Who would have known? Little Christmas book that she wrote. Whole bunch of magazines. We've got like a Texas Money Magazine, Country Weekly. Um, and these are all where she graces the covers of various magazines over the years and i mean there's a whole stack of magazines here i mean i really really tried i was looking for a collector really really wanted this set to go for a hundred dollars and i took the best deal took it for fifty dollars so this whole set and i have to box it up i gotta get a um, big box for this is gonna go for fifty dollars i made what did i make i made my uh fifteen dollar profit off of that It'll take a couple of days for the money to come in, but hopefully she'll be happy with a consignment item. So the one thing in regards to consignment, and this is this I learned early on, try not to do consignment with friends and family. Ugh, they rely so heavily because they see how well you're doing as far as selling and this and that. And they don't understand that a lot of times you're taking a cut on your items just to get rid of it. Well, this is one of the cases. I was a little worried about it and iffy because it's like, uh, you're not going to make millions off of it. So they made, like I said, it was a $50 sale. They made um, $35. I made $15. Hopefully that'll be a good cut. We'll see. So the last thing, that, that was it. And I'm actually happy. Those items all sold yesterday. And I don't know if you saw my previous video. I was a little worried about how sales were going to be and what's going to happen. If my stale sales stay like this consistently, where I'm selling like two or three items a day, I will feel so much better. But if it happens like it did for the past two weeks, where I go three or four days without a single sale, then yes, I am going to start panicking. So let's talk about panicking. Oh my God, people are losing their minds. I mean, okay, I'm not going to feed into the paranoia and all of it, but let's just talk a little bit about how it affects eBay for a moment. And let's be realistic. There are actual eBay sellers saying, well, I'm going to close up my eBay shop. Okay, you know something? 
Go do that. Go close your eBay shop. Take all that effort that you did and all the work you did and just close up shop completely. Because you know something? If you close shop, that leaves more for sellers like me to sell. I mean, come on. Is it that ridiculous? You're at home. You could stay at home. You don't have to worry about people. You just keep working, 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 and you just keep putting items out. The next thing is people are putting it on vacation mode. Why? This is the time that you could try to, even if you don't make money, this is the time to prepare yourself for when the economy does turn around. I mean, this is like the, the sale portion of the stock market. Yes, things are down. You know eventually they're going to go back up. And when they go back up, wouldn't it be great to be ready and have a full store? I mean, I feel like almost this is the time where people are purposely emptying their shelves and leaving an empty store, whereas someone like me is thinking about this and saying, okay, you know something? I'm going to start stocking my shelves as much as possible. I don't care that my store right now, nobody's coming in and it's an empty store because I know that when people do decide to start buying, guess who they're going to be buying from? The people who have a lot of stuff. I'm also even tempted because now I am starting to see a lot of my books sell again. People are at home. They have nothing to do. Um, they want to stay home. They want to read a book. I might even start considering to flood the marketplace with my $5 book specials again. I mean, I've been spending so much time taking them off. Um, I might consider putting them back on. We'll see. I don't know. But, um... The point is, people, wash your hands, use common sense, do not freak out, do not stockpile. I mean, that's part of the problem of why we're having problems and price gouging and all that other stuff. Use what you can. Okay, you know something? Stockpile for two weeks if it's that bad. Not for three years. I mean, there are people that are going in there and buying and buying and buying. And look at what's happening. There's like this one story of this guy that has 117,000 um, bottles of hand sanitizer. And now he can't find anybody to buy it. Well, of course, because of that article, probably everybody is hounding him now. And he's making some sales. So that probably was a brilliant uh, marketing scheme. But the point is, it's like, this will blow over everyone. Calm down. Don't go crazy. Leave items for other people to be able to use and buy. Don't be greedy. Don't be a dick. Let's work together. You can still make money. You can still enjoy the sales. So now with that, this is a short video. Um, I hope everybody has a very happy St. Patrick's Day. Little lucky hat. Little look of the draw. You know you got your little green men. And um, what can I say? I want you to enjoy yourself. Have a great day. Good luck with sales and keep on selling. Take care, everyone.